Hey guys, today we are going to learn about the ophthalmic instrument. In the previous video, we had talked about the lid speculums in the first step. And let's begin this video and see how much we cover in this video. So the first is among the hooks and retractor. This is a picture of lens expressor or hook expressor, right? So the first thing among the hooks and retractor is lens expressor. It is a hook. It is a flat metal handle with rounded curve at one end. Tip of the curve is knobbed, right? You can see the tip here. And what's the use? Tip, it is used to apply the pressure on the limbus at six o'clock position during the delivery of lens in intracapsular cataract extraction and to express the nucleus in extracapsular cataract extraction. It can also be used as muscle hook. The next one is Muscle hook, also known as trabismus hook. It is similar to the lens expressor in appearance, but has a blunt guarding knob at the end to prevent muscle slippage. The knob here is blunt as compared to the previous one that was rounded. And the use is, it is used to engage the extraocular muscle during squint surgery, enucleation, and retinal detachment. It can also be used as lens expressor. The next one here is Desmer's retractor. It is a saddle shape instrument folded on itself at one end you can see here and it is used to retract the lids during examination of the eyeball in cases of bilharospasm in children in cases with marked swelling and ichymosis what's that it is cat's paw lacrimal wound retractor it is a fork like with terminals bent inward so fork like and bent inward and it is used to retract the skin during lacrimal sac and lid surgery it is self-retaining lacrimal wound retractor, also known as Mueller's retractor. It is made up of two limbs, you can see, and with three curved pins on each engaging the edge of incision, right? There are pins on the edge, and the limbs are kept in retracted position with the help of fixation screw. And the use is to retract the skin during lacrimal sac surgery. So here another one, it is among the needle holders. So we are now talking about the needle holders. And the first one among them is spring action needle holder, also known as Barakir's type. The jaws of the needle holder are firmly serrated to hold the fine needles firmly, right? The jaws are serrated. And it is used for passing suture in conjunctiva, cornea, sclera, and extraocular muscle. The next among the needle holder is Castro Vigio's needle holder. It is a medium sized spring action needle holder, right? And it is generally used extraocular surgery, such as conjunctival suturing and squint surgery, and also for intraocular surgery. This is Aruga's T1, Silk Cox, and Kelt needle holder. It is large needle holder with and without locking device. So you can see. And it is very commonly used in lid surgery and for passing superior rectus suture. Let's move toward the knives and the knife needlish. The first one is keratomes, right? It has a thin diamond shaped blade with a sharp apex and two cutting edge. You can see here straight as well as curved keratomes are available in various sizes 2.8 mm, 3 mm, 3.5 mm and 5.5 mm. It is used to make the volvular corneal incision for entry into the anterior chamber for all modern techniques of cataract surgery, for example, conventional ECCE and phacoemulsification. The second here among the knives is 15 degree side port entry blade. So it is a fine straight knife with a sharp pointed tip and cutting edge on one side. So it has a cutting edge on one side shown above to make a small volvular clear corneal incision in fat emulsification. It is also used for paracentesis. Let's move toward the next one. It is a crescent knife. It is sharp curved bevel up knife having cut splitting action at the tip and both the sides. It is used to make the tunnel incision in sclera in cornea for fecco emulsification and manual small incision cataract surgery. Just uh, know the names and the uses. We'll talk about the different conditions in ophthalmology in coming videos. So coming toward the next, it is Tux knife. It has a short blade with a semicircular blunt dissecting the edge. It is used to separate the conjunctiva and subconjunctival tissue from the sclera and limbus, to separate partial thickness lamella of sclera during trabulectomy and to separate corneal lamella in lamellar keratoplasty. Here we have a different thing known as cystostome or capsulotome. It is a small needle knife with a bent tip 
which is sharp on both the edges. Disposable cystotome is prepared by bending the tip of the disposable 26 gauge or 30 gauge hypodermic needle at 90 degree and a shaft at 45 degree. And it is used for doing anterior capsulotomy or capsular hexes during extra capsular cataract extraction. Last but not the least among the knives and knife needlish. So we have foreign body spud. It has small stout and flat blade with a blunt tip and edges on the both sides. And it is used to remove the corneal foreign body. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more.